Hi, my name is Melissa and I'm an assistant director here at Triple C Camp. Today we're going to be focusing on art and drama, which is one of our explorer specialties. Our project this week is going to be paper mache bowls. This is a project that takes a longer amount of time, so we're going to start it and then we'll continue the project. So let's jump in. The first step is that we are going to be making a paper pulp. So I have this bowl full of shredded paper. Uh, to shred paper, you can rip it, you can cut it. Uh, you, if you have a shredder at your house, you can go and collect some shredded paper from your shredder. But you're gonna want a bowl full of this shredded paper. Um, I like to use scrap paper. So paper from the recycling bin or old newspaper, anything like that is totally fine. So, I have a bowl full of shredded paper, and this is just a medium sized mixing bowl. And then I'm going to take some water. This is just room temperature water, and I'm going to pour it onto my paper. And I'm going to scrunch my paper down, add a little bit more water. it down a little bit more and you'll notice that your paper is absorbing the water and that's great that's what we want it looks now like we have a lot less paper in this bowl so earlier it looked like the bowl was overflowing with paper and now it looks like we have just a little bit of paper I'm going to add a little bit more water so it's almost level with the top not quite I'm gonna push it down and then I'm going to leave this to soak. So you can let it soak for as little as two hours and as much as uh, overnight or a day. Um, but I'm gonna leave this so that the paper can absorb that water because we are going to be using this for our paper mache bowls. And there are a couple of different forms of paper mache. Sometimes you use strips of paper. Today we're going to be using uh, this paper mache uh, mush, if you will, this paper mush that we're going to be making. So, time to let this sit and we'll be back soon with the next step. For the next step, you will need flour and water. So have those things available when we come back. All right, so we're back. Uh, we have been soaking our paper in water for the past 24 hours or so. It's been a while. Um, and then I just put the paper, the wet paper, in the blender and I blended it to make this nice pulp. All right. Um, so I blended it. If you have an immersion blender, just a handheld blender, that would also work for making the pulp. The next thing that we're going to do uh, is mix off. Uh, paper mache and the way we do that is we take flour and water so we want one part flour to two parts water that's one part flour to two parts water and then we're going to put it in the microwave so I put it in this bowl I put one cup of flour two cups of water and I stirred it up and then I went and I put it in the microwave and I started with 20 seconds and I microwaved it in increments of 20 seconds until we had this nice thick paste. That's how I knew that it's ready. And then I've been just kind of smushing out the clumps that are in here. Um, so it can be as smooth as possible. If you have a whisk, you could use a whisk as well. Um, so that again, that's one part flour to two parts water. And depending on how many uh, bowls you're going to make, you can decide kind of how much you need. Um, so that's what I have here. So I have my paper that's been through the blender. I have my paper mache. I also have the bowls I'm going to use as molds and I have some plastic wrap that I'm going to use to help protect my bowls. So the next thing that I want to do is I'm going to mix my paper and my paper mache. So I do have this empty bowl that I'm going to use um, for that part. Now I know that my hands are going to get pretty messy um, so I'm going to actually line my bowls that I want to use for the paper mache first. So I'm going to open my plastic wrap 
which has never been used. Okay, so my bowls are lined. I got that taken care of. And now I'm going to mix my paper mache. Um, I want to squeeze as much water out of this as I can. You can see that there's quite a bit of water still lurking in here. All right, so I've been squeezing out all of the, the water out of my paper mache. All right, and basically all I've left in the bowl is there's some mush. If I wanted to get a strainer, I could probably um, get more out, but I think that I probably have enough to do my bowls. So I have all of this paper mache and I'm just gonna estimate. I want um, about equal parts of this paper mache mixture as I do the paper. Um, so I'm just going to pour in an estimate for what I think is equal parts. Again, that is flour and water. It's been microwaved, so it's made this nice thick paste. And now just using my hands, I'm going to just kind of mush it up right in this bowl. You can kind of see that I'm just mushing it up using my hand as my stir, I'm getting um, all this paper mush I'm kind of separating with my fingers. Um, I'm a baker and so when I bake this is kind of how I would, if I were making like pie crust or something, I'd be um, kind of getting my butter mixed up with that flour. Um, so I have a nice consistency here. It feels like all of that paper's been kind of um, taken over by the paper mache at this point. And you can kind of see it's more, it was mushy before, but now it's more of like, almost like a dough. So that paper mache and that paper has been incorporated and I had about equal parts of that. Okay, so then I'm going to take my bowls. Again, my hands are messy at this point. So I'm gonna take my bowls and I'm going to, I've already had the saran wrap in them, and I'm going to lump in some of this paper mache, and then I'm gonna just push it onto the shape of the bowl. You can do this on the outside of the bowl if you would like, um, but when it dries, it does um, shrink up a little bit, so if you do it on the outside, you would just need to pay really close attention so that it doesn't crack as it dries. So I'm choosing to do it on the inside of the bowl. That's kind of what works for me. So my end bowl is going to be just slightly smaller than the bowl that I'm using as my frame. So I have this all spread out inside of my bowl. It's probably about maybe that thick. So not very, very thick, but it's, it's thin enough that I'll make a nice bowl and we'll be able to paint it but it's not so thick that it's gonna take forever to dry. All right, so I'm gonna set that aside. I'm going to grab another bowl. Our paper mache bowls now need to dry because uh, they're super wet. And so I'm going to put them out in a nice sunny place to dry and I'm going to check them every day or so. It's summertime here in Charlottesville, so it's pretty hot out. Um, I expect these to dry in two to three days. If it's a little bit cooler, if you're doing this a different time of the year, they could take up to a week to dry. Um, it depends on the temperature. It also depends on how thick and how wet your bowl is. Uh, so everyone's might be a little bit different. Um, but next time we meet, we will be checking out how our bowls look. We'll take them out and we will paint them. All right, we'll see you soon. And welcome back. So our paper mache bowls have been sitting for about three days. They are completely dry and now it's time to decorate them. Uh, if you bring them in and they are still a little bit wet, you can always stick them in the oven with an adult's approval and help um, on low, low, low um, for just like 15 to 20 minutes to finish drying them out. 
As they dry, they do shrink down a bit, so they should be fairly simple to get out. Um, if they're a little bit wet when you bring them in, you can also trim the edges pretty simply. If they are completely dry when you bring them in, it's a little bit harder to trim those edges because it may crack the bowl. But here we are. So I have uh, one of my bowls and I'm going to just loosen the saran wrap from around the outside and I'm going to pop it out. And the next step is to paint our bowls. Um, and you can do this any way you want. I choose to use some outdoor acrylic paint so that if I want to put them out on my patio table, I can. So I've got my paint ready. I'm going to spread out the saran wrap and continue to use it this time as a paint buffer. And I'm going to paint my bowl. Remember before you do any sort of painting, you want to make sure that you are asking permission from the adult at home. Um, about using paints and where a good place to paint is. If you're using a surface that needs to be protected, you can put down a uh, newspaper or uh, butcher paper or cardboard boxes, whatever you may have on hand. And then if you spill any paint, you're wiping it up immediately before it has time to dry. All right, so I've got my paint brushes. All right, and we're gonna just go ahead and Give it a nice coat of paint and then we can do any uh, decorations we want. We could leave it uh, plain if we want. We could do one color inside, one color outside. Really the sky's the limit with whatever you decide is going to look best for your bowls. And these are really cute, um, kind of more rustic bowls. I personally really like the pops of color that we can give them. Um, so on this one, I'm going to do this tealy color on the outside, and then I'm going to do a green on the inside. I've seen some people paint these as uh, different kinds of fruit. So you can paint one to look like a watermelon or a lemon um, or different summer fruits, and that's really cute as well. All right, so there we go. Um, I'm going to paint the outside and then I'll go ahead and paint the inside. I did paint some of my larger bowls already. So this is what the larger one looks like with the outside painted. Um, it's pretty, pretty cute, I think. It would hold things really nicely. So I'm going to go ahead and paint the inside of this. I'll finish up painting and then I will show you our finished product. All right, so here we are with our painted bowls. Uh, you can do more decorations on them if you would like to, or you can just leave them solid colors. Sky's the limit with what you decide to do. Thanks for joining me for Paper Mache Bowls. It was great to have you along. We'll see you again soon. Goodbye.